Um, my name's Carla Black, and um, and I'm an artist from Glasgow, and I make um, abstract sculpture, not just pictorially abstract, like um, in a traditional sense where something doesn't work itself up into a figure or a landscape or an object or some sort of representation of something. Um, that is also true for, for my work, but I would say that it's also materially abstract in that the materials don't necessarily work, work themselves up into like structure or permanence or stability as such. And I would say, you know, people think that there's a lot of sort of unusual materials within the work that I make and there's little bits of like makeup and sort of less conventional art making materials but really um, the bulk of the work is still made from conventional art making materials like paper, plaster, chalk, paint. I prioritise material experience like above language as a way to sort of learn about and understand the world or even move through it. I feel like language is a really sort of inadequate, primitive tool for communication really. Before we have like words for, for things, we all know form and colour and we have a physical relationship to the world. So language is always secondary and only really exists to name those things or to say what we want or, or what we understand or like to, to communicate about those things in, in that way. So I try to put that um, material experience forward first in the work that I make. And I try to elicit at least a sort of impetus towards physical response in the viewer. It's really, in a way, the experience of it is like a, like an individual alone in a landscape. And as an experience, it should belong to you. People think institutions, you know, galleries, um, our sort of civilised society in, in general thinks that it, it wants art, but often it doesn't really, you know, because really the really sort of difficult, messy, chaotic business of what art really is, is is difficult for people and it's difficult for institutions and I suppose I'm trying to with my materials keep them really raw keep that potential of the creative moment within them and so I'm really trying to force that difficult messy chaotic creative moment into the gallery into the market into the civilized society so I would say when I describe my work as well that they're only ever only just sculptures or almost sculptures, but still, you know, most definitely sculptures. And I'm like very adamant um, about that term. They skirt up against other mediums, like they get really close to being installation or painting or performance art. Um, but I always pull them back to having these sort of edges and having just enough autonomy that I can see that they're individual sculptures. So it's really important to me that my work is seen as sculpture because really um, sculpture is the medium that exploded itself like in the probably 1950s, 1960s into like all the new forms. So from the medium of sculpture we get performance art, land art, sound art, video art, happenings, um, installation. I'm really excited by all that experimentation and all that development and I really have always wanted to sort of get myself right in amongst all of that. But I feel like what we lost a bit like at the beginning of uh, postmodernism when that happened was a real sort of um, concern for very careful aesthetics and so really formal aesthetics are really important to me so I'm trying to get in amongst all that experimentation which is what became of postmodernist sculpture really and pull it back to the autonomous um, modernist object. 
so that I have um, within those sort of edges and limits I can really concentrate on the aesthetics of like the relation of composition to form to material to colour which is really important to me. In the studio mostly what I do is I prepare materials and you could think of it like I, I almost like make my own materials really always for a show um, or like for any, you know, any sculpture. Say I'm using paper, for example, I'm using a lot of paper for this exhibition. It's just cartridge paper, it just comes in a roll, but then I will, I've been soaking it in watercolour ink and then I've been um, sort of moulding it over household objects and leaving it to dry and making these solid, almost solid forms for the show but it's like that's me preparing the material really in the studio and then um, it will all come here to the gallery and then I'll make it sort of make it into work here actually in the space. Always for me the conditions that surround the work become part of the work and so whatever the practical limitations are like within a space, just the physicality of the room itself, like where the door is, where the window is, how, how big it is, becomes the sort of um, frame and the limit for, for the work. And then also within that, within those conditions, I would say, well, is it an institution? Is it a museum? Is it a commercial gallery? Is it an art fair? And those sort of conditions will also um, determine what the, what the work becomes becomes you know so obviously every artist practice is, is different and some people would just make a really kind of solid transferable object in the studio that always has its integrity keeps its integrity within it even when it's moved to the gallery but for me like it's it's just really open I just keep the whole thing so open that um, it can be affected by everything around it really every artist is going to be different in what they can achieve and whether they feel a need to make it all themselves or whether there are assistants involved or whatever so I you know think about like you know I'm the age that I am I'm the height that I am I have the physical strength that I have I have the sort of endurance that I have now at this age or whatever um, I'm female like all, all those things are gonna have an impact on what I can sort of physically achieve in the space. And it's just important to me that that, um, that you see the results of that in reality. And, and I think often like you'll see, because I use my hands and I use my body with the materials, there'll be a lot of sort of marks left by the hand and, and the body. It's big and it's heavy as much as what it looks like in the end is quite sort of ephemeral and light often and the colours are also like that but the reality of it is there's a huge amount of stuff whether it's paper or powder um, or cellophane or whatever it is that I'm making it with and the working process um, takes quite a lot of physical endurance and so I work it out so that I can do it all myself so either like I, I make it in parts or I use light materials or I use a raw material like powder that I can just put out with a sieve or um, I use material that's going to dry quickly or something like that so that I can actually make it all myself and when I'm making the work it has to really be a, a sort of um like a kind of solo expedition or something like that as well like it's just me all the materials and the space and I do what I can hopefully what I'm trying to do is really retain the potential within the material so that it still is alive by the point that people come to see it